Okay, today is Tuesday, October 17th, and this is your new Guild Wars 2 news. Uh, Halloween! The gates to the Mad Realm have opened once again, and Krytus' most infamous monarch, Mad King Thorn, has returned to hold court in Lion's Arch. Lord Vassals of the King are strongly encouraged to enjoy the festivities. Meet the denizens of the Mad Realm in events across Krytus. Tour the Mad Realm itself in the Mad King's Labyrinth, and fearsome Mad King's Clock Tower Jumping Puzzle. Compete with your fellow mortals in Lunatic Inquisition, Reaper's Rumble, and the Mad King's Raceway. Attend the King's Whims and his notorious Mad King says game, or match wits and blades against royalty and ascent to madness. Um, now, if anyone is doing the Halloween event in Guild Wars 2 for the very first time, I do have a guide for that up on the Muckluck Labs website. I'll have a link to that in the description, and I'll try to pin a comment to that in uh, down below if you have need. Uh, the Lion's Arch Captain's Council wishes to remind citizens that they are not affiliated with the Crichton Monarchy and cannot guarantee the safety of any individuals who choose to dabble in dangerous realms, mad or otherwise. A new variant of the long-feared Mad King's Clock Tower has appeared. Normally unavailable to visitors during maintenance, guests are now welcome to enter the stopped clock tower, an incarnation of the tower's daunting climb with less time pressure. Existing achievements have been updated to reflect which version of the tower they completed it in, and new achievements have been added for players to conquer each variant. What? They've added an easy mode to the clock- Look, look, the freaking five-year-old has done the clock tower. They didn't need to add an easy mode. It's been done by toddlers. Okay, no, I'm kind of trolling. Yeah, it, it, that is that is a very famous young child that has done the clock tower before. I will fully admit, the very first time that I managed to get the clock tower done, it took me over an hour of attempts. It was it was challenging. It took me a long time. And it sucks because if you fall, you have to wait on the thing to restart. So there's like a minute or two in between each attempt, which slows you down. Uh, after that, I was able to just nail it like every single time. Um, but, okay, so, yeah, I mean, the, for, the, for the, anyone who's never done it, the clock tower is a jumping puzzle that goes up the, oh, you know what, I can, I can just show that video again. It, it goes up the, this rubble that's around a floating tower, but this green lava rises, so if you go too slow, the lava gets your ankles, and then you, you just die, and then you have to restart. Um, so that's, that's how it works. Uh, so this, I guess, allows you to do it without the lava. Um, the annual Halloween Rituals meta achievement has been updated with a fashionable new reward, the Clawing Shadow Greaves. Earn this spooky new armor piece by completing a variety of Halloween activities and show your allegiance to the Mad King's Court with pride. Last year's meta achievement reward, the Clawing Shadow Gloves, can now be purchased from Halloween vendors if you missed it. Uh, the, uh, the Clawing Shadow Greaves. Let me see if I can find that in-game. Let's open up this, go to the wardrobe, um... Clawing, okay, clawing shadow pants. Um, I actually don't see it. I see boots and I see gloves. I do not see, oh wait, but Greaves is probably boots. I was thinking it was pants. Uh, let's do heavy, there we go. That's what they look like on an Asura who's in his underpants. There you go. Okay, uh, what else? The clawing shadow gloves from last year can be purchased from Halloween vendors. The new Grim Machine weapon set is now available. You receive your choice of a weapon by progressing the annual Halloween Rituals Meta Achievement or the weekly Halloween Festivities Achievement. Grim Machine. All right. Search all weapon skins, filter by the words Grim and Machine, and what do we got? Let's see. Uh, let's reset this and boop. Okay. Ooh, I like it. All right, sword, hammer, uh, longbow, that's a compound compound bow, short bow, axe, yeah, this weapon set just hates the ozone layer specifically, dagger, great sword, <laughs> this, is, this, is just, this is just blunt, this clang, uh, mace, pistol, rifle, Imagine trying to aim down, like you're looking down the sights and it's just like pumping smog right in your eye. <laughs> uh, scepter, staff. That's what it looks like. Focus. It's a lamp! Oh, it dangles too. <laughs> dangly focus. You can get a dangly lamp. Uh, torch. Also a lamp. Warhorn. Shield. This, this might look good on an engineer. Again, though, the smog just pumping right in your eye. All right, that is the that's the the Grim Machine set. 
Uh, four makeshift paper bag helms are now available for players to show Halloween spirit on a budget. <laughs> Search the word paper. All right. Uh... <laughs> Angry. Blush. <laughs> Blush. Happy. Oh my god, you could be dream. And sad. Oh my god. And they've got them for light, medium, and heavy. Okay. Uh, three new weapons are now available in the courtly weapon chest, which can be rarely found by opening trick or treat bags. They can also be purchased from Sparkling Stone and Lion's Arch. Three new weapons from the courtly weapon chest. Uh, is that the Black Lion one, or is that something else? Me just a second here, searching in Black Lion chest. Um, there is new stuff here, but not that. Okay, give me just a second here. We are going to teleport to Lion's Arch. And we're going to run to Sparking Stone and check out the new weapon skins before we continue. You just fast forward a minute if you don't want to see this part. Isn't that the coda? Yes. Yes, it is. All right, he is over here, I believe. All right, show me your wares. Show me your moves. All right, some of these are from previous years, and some of these are from current. I can't recall which is which, so I'll just go through these really quick. Corroding Abyss, Luminous Wings, Barbed Refuge Shield, Nightmare Splitter Axe, Harvest Grin Staff, Pale Lights Companions. Uh, is that a torch? Yes. Uh, Sanctioned Executioner. Ooh, very Bloodborne. Uh, guided Executioner and heralded executioner it's it's a danger dude okay the long-awaited mini there leads the candy raven is now available from halloween vendors i'm sorry did you say candy raven all right the vendors over here i believe uh usually have the miniatures uh so one of these probably has the new thing uh cooking recipe nope not you uh, Candy Corn Merchant, uh, Mini Madam Cookie, Mini Derleets the Candy Raven. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow, that's me, and that's Jabbers. Hi, Jabbers. All right, so that's the Candy Raven. All right, new Halloween-themed guild decorations have been added. Many small issues have been addressed to ensure more polished festival experience with all visitors to the Mad Realm. The gates to the Mad Realm will be open for three weeks until November 7th. Have a happy Halloween. Speaking of World Polish, added a proper name for one of the legendary Leyline Anomalies attacks. Fixed an issue that could prevent the legendary Bandit Executioner's orbiting projectile from correctly following the Bandit. Fixed a scaling issue in the Defeat the Giant Destroyer Troll event in the Timberline Falls. Fixed an issue that could cause the instance owner to be stuck behind a door during the Silence story mission. Fixed a stalling issue that could occur during the story mission Battle for Cragstead. Fixed a stalling issue that could occur when reaching the Eye of the North while replaying the Voice in the Deep story mission. Fixed an issue that caused a looping conversation with Hal the Hermit. Fixed an invalid interaction prompt in Seitung Province. And fixed an issue that caused the Jahai Bluffs Griffin Expert achievement to be awarded when completing other dangers. Other adventures. Dangers. Yes, so slistexic. Uh, items. Fixed an issue that caused chickens to be slightly embedded in the ground when viewing a preview of the Endless Mystery Foul Tonic. Oh my gosh. Someone free the chickens. <laughs> Trick or treat bags have an extremely rare chance to drop enchanted music boxes. Fix an issue that prevented the gentle garden swing chair animations from being displayed to other players. Fix an issue that caused the pocket jade armor to disappear earlier than intended. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, the, the reading the words trick or treat bags, if you, uh, again, if you're new to the Halloween in the game, there are ways to farm money. There's a very popular thing called the Labyrinth Farm uh, that is open to you. I go over it in a bit more detail in the Halloween guide that I'll have linked down below. But if you are interested in like earning some extra coin on your characters, it can be done by characters of almost any level. Uh, so it might be something you're interested in. Uh, profession skills. General Relic of Leadership. They fixed an issue that caused this relic to convert more conditions than intended. 
Chronomancer, split second, reduce total power coefficient from 1.3, 2.1, 2.8, based on number of active clones, to 1.0, 1.65, 2.3. .1 so, a little bit of a nerf across all things. Uh, in PvP only, PvP only. Necromancer Death Nova, increase the minion summoning interval from 3 seconds to 15 seconds in world v world only. Good lord, 500% nerf. Uh, reduce the power coefficient from 0.6 to 0.3 in world v world only. Okay, 1000% nerf. So they, <laughs> five times longer cooldown, half the damage. Uh, summon Madness, reduce the number of minions summoned from eight to four in World v. World only. Uh, Reaper, rise. Reduce max number of targets from two to one in World v. One? It's gonna summon one of those little dudes? Bruh, just replace the skill with something else at that point. Holy crap. Uh, this makes me sad. I'm not even like hardcore World v. World, and Necro is not my main, but I loved options. I, lo I love things other than the blob meta. I love when people like mix it up. And when the when you know people figured out a way to make like, you know, Reaper piles, stuff like that, I thought it was cool because it was creative. It was creative. Uh, but uh, no, we're, we're back to freaking blobs. Uh, Ranger, Signet of the Hunt, increase the cooldown from 25 to 30 seconds in PvP only. Uh, that is the one that increases run speed, and when you activate it, your attacks cannot be blocked for a couple seconds. Uh, Soul Beast, One Wolf Pack, reduce the duration from 8 to 6 seconds in World v. World. Increase strike interval from 0.25 to 0.5 seconds in World v. World. Reduce power coefficient from 0.63 to 0.5 World v. World only. I could be wrong on this. Uh, I believe that this is a direct, um, result of Soul Beast getting... The weapons, weapon mastery and getting access to Druid Staff. Uh, there's just... Soul Beast combined with Druid Staff has been incredibly dangerous and just like deleting people on site. It's like they're waving around a pin light that just kills everybody from 1200 range. Uh, in One Wolf Pack, uh, when you do the beam attack of the staff, it actually does three ticks. I actually think I'm... Hold on. Yeah, I'm on my range right now. So it goes like tick, tick, tick. Tick, tick, tick. So when you hit someone with it, it does three hits, three hits, three hits, three hits each time you do that little channel. Uh, so it would proc one wolf pack multiple times per channel, and this, I think, is to reduce how fast it's procking that. Um, Untamed. Natural Fortitude. Reduce the life siphon damage from 1700 to 1k in PvP only. Let loose. This trait no longer gives you fury in PvP or World of World. Multi-shot. Fix a bug that allowed the skill to be fired behind the user. Just farting arrows. <laughs> Revenant. Miss Swing. Re reduce the max number of targets from 5 to 3. Miss Slash. Max number of targets nerfed from 5 to 3. Arcing Miss. Reduce max number of targets from 5 to 3. Uh, is that great? Is that? I think that's the Great Sword auto attack chain. I welcome confirmation from chat if anyone knows. I think this is the Great Sword 1 chain. Um, True Strike. Reduce the power coefficient per block stack from 0.3 to point. Zero, zero point zero five. So that's one sixth of what it was in World v World only. Holy crap. Uh, Thief, Swindler's Equilibrium. Fixed an issue that prevented this trait from properly reducing the recharge of steel. Spectre, Endless Night, reduced the slow duration from 0.5 to 0.25 in PvP only. Reduced the torment duration from 6 seconds to 5 seconds in PvP only. So duration minor nerf, but the slow duration heavy nerf. Uh, warrior changes. Berserker. Savage Instinct. Reduce the duration from 2 seconds to 1 second in PvP only. Blood Reaction. Reduce precision to ferocity conversion from 10% to 5% in World v. World only. Fatal Frenzy. Reduce the power bonus from 300 to 150 in World v. World only. Eternal Champion. Reduce stability duration from 3 seconds to 2 seconds in PvP. Sundering Leap. Increase cooldown from 15 seconds to 18 seconds in PvP. Bladesworn Unshakable Mountain reduced the barrier from 1k to 800 in PvP. Combat Stimulant reduced base healing from 3200 to 2700 in PvP. And Stim State reduced base healing from 3500 to 3k in PvP. And Gun Stinger increased ammunition recharge from 15 seconds to 18 seconds in PvP. Uh, so, Bladesworn, lots of minor nerfs in PvP. Um, Berserker, a few nerfs in PvP, and a few nerfs in World v. World. Uh, World v. World change only. Added an exotic back item and heavy, medium, and light aquatic headgear 
to the Unif Oh, interesting. So for those who don't know, uh, maybe they, they just missed the recent news. They added a merchant in World v. World that allows you to get stat selectable exotic armor for a very low cost. I believe it is now the easiest way in the entire game to get stat selectable exotic armor. Let's say you just hit 80 and you want to get a, an armor set and it's one of the uh, rarer stat combinations. Like you want to get uh, Harrier or Dragons or Ritualist. And you, know, you read a guide online, it says, get this gear. And you're like, how do I get this? Currently getting a full set of exotic gear from World v. World with stat select selection, which means you can pick the stats on the gear, uh, is the easiest way in the game to get that. Um, so apparently they just added aquatic stuff, uh, aquatic headgear, the rebreather, and the back item to that merchant. So that's cool. That's cool. Um, I believe the easiest way to get ascended aquatic headgear is the bitter frost farm, the winter berries, but that that requires a certain episode of Living World season three. Okay, I'm going off topic. Uh, late notes added later. Uh, General fixed a rare client crash that occurred when returning to the character selection screen. World vs. World fixed an issue that could cause incorrect map queue numbers to be displayed. They're lying to us. Fixed an issue that caused queue is ready pop-ups to disappear after loading screens. Fixed an issue that caused queue slots to be held longer than expected after players selected re-enter queue or leave queue. And real quick, I'm going to refresh this just to see if there's anything more that's been added. And that is it at this time. Passy, thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate that. Uh, so, next thing, my gem store thing is glowing. Why is it glowing? Um, Moon Shadow... Wait, what? Hold on, go back to this. Moon Shadow Bat Griffin skin. Uh, so... Stop. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, okay, hold on. You are making me mad. Okay, here we go. It's a Bat Griffin. Okay, so that is new. That is in the game if you want a Bat Griffin. Bat mount, sort of. Uh, what else do we have? Let's see. You scroll up. Let's go down. Da -down, da -down, da -down. Uh, lots of different gathering tools. Side lace pants. They added that, I think, uh, last week. So that's relatively new, but not brand new today. Um, I think that might be it for the new, new, new stuff. You missed the weekly chest. Uh, you talk about the Black Lion chest? Oh, weekly Black Lion supply package. What are you? Uh, two Black Lion Keys, one Heroic Booster, uh, Transmutation Charge, Guaranteed Die Unlock. Uh... So as a, as a player who has been playing this game for a long time, this is nothing, this is nothing, this is nothing, and I see two Black Lion Keys for 400 gems. Black Lion Keys are 125, so that's a loss. I personally wouldn't recommend it unless you really want all of those things for a specific reason. Like this is this is right here two hours of some buffs and then it goes away. This is a uh, a die unlock uh, and it's random. You don't even get to pick it, so you might get might get like snot booger green, um, and then unless you want snot booger green, in which case you'll get urine yellow, uh, and then transmutation charges. Uh, you know you you get tons of those playing the game. Um, is the candy corn gobbler back? Uh, gobbler? Hmm, I don't see it. I do not see it. Hang on. Candy. Don't, uh, it is. It is? Uh, it's, why is it not coming up in the search? Yeah, I don't see it. <laughs> I, I, I do not see it. Okay, my Twitch chat is saying they can see it. I don't see it. Click on promotions. Um, you know what? It's probably because I own it. Interesting. Uh, okay, so I, I own it, so maybe I can't see it in the shop anymore. All right, so for those who don't know, there is an item called the Candy Corn Gobbler in the game, and what it does is you can give it candy corn, and it will give you a random costume or a random buff. So if you just keep clicking it and giving it tons of candy corn, you can get uh, every single buff in the game. Uh, oh, there it is right there. You can get every buff, every booster in the game. Now, boosters are things like, you know, you get 50% more karma for an hour, you get 50% more XP for an hour, stuff like that. So if you just force feed a thousand candy corn into this thing, you can get like, you know, 10 hours of every booster in the game year round just by giving it candy corn repeatedly. Now, it is tedious to use because you have to like double click, double click, double click. And sometimes you'll, you'll set up an, uh, some people will set up an auto clicker, go AFK 10 minutes and then come back and then play the game for a couple days and then do that again. Uh, and the, the buff times only run out when you're logged in, by the way. Um, however, it does allow access to 
all of the boosts in the game year round, which no other bo no other gobbler does that. Uh, you get uh, different buffs from the other. Um, uh, what is it? There's the taffy, uh, the, the dragon taffy gobbler, and there is the snowflake one, and those give a different buff. That's called like a festival buff or something like that. Uh, different from this, but yeah. So that's the thing. Um, okay, black lion chest. Is there anything new in the black lion chest right now? Uh, Dakobi, Dakobi swords, reconfigure construct. Okay, this was already in there, but I'll show it real quick. It's the sword that's made out of the cubes from like the Rata area. Um, personal gyrocopter chair and glider combo. Oh my god! <laughs> it's a chair and a glider. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I like how my staff is going through my neck. I'm like going to the hospital right now. Uh, that is awesome. That is awesome. So this is a new rare thing in the Black Lion chest right now. <laughs> this is fantastic. All right, for all the engineers or... Dude, imagine a char in this thing and the blades are just hitting him in the head. He's just like, dunk, 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 dunk. The thing just constantly has to turn left. That's that's wonderful. All right. Well, no, that is the new stuff. Okay, so we, we went over the notes. We looked in the shop uh, and we looked at the new stuff in the Black Lion chest. I don't think there's anything else new in here. No, Lorekeeper is fantastic. It's been around for a while. dkb has been around for a while. Uh, all right, yeah, uh, that is everything I know about that is new in Guild Wars 2 today. And once again, if it is your first time in uh, the Halloween holiday, I have a guide on it if you want to break down of all the different things you can do. Uh, Twitch chat is saying that there's also a few new special quests in the vault. Um, Let's see, what have we what have we got here? Uh, yeah, do events in Mad King's Labyrinth is new. Uh, Halloween festivities, there's some stuff there. You get a whole bunch more, ah, uh, more AA. Uh, is there any stuff in, let's see, achievements and festivals, Halloween rituals? There's a ton of stuff in here if you want to check this out also. All right, so that's it. That's all I know about the new stuff for today. Any questions, problems, thoughts, concerns, corrections, put them in the comments down below. I will read them. I will respond unless you're weird, in which case I might just get, <laughs> nice, okay. Yeah.